Good morning, my friends. I want to talk about um, self-acceptance today and what that means for your body biologically and why it's so important, um, period. This is something that uh, it sounds very woo-woo. It sounds very squishy and soft and kind of like, um, I don't know, there's a lot of connotations, at least in my mind, that came with self-acceptance that were, that it was like just a, a thing for it was like a luxury for, for, I don't know, snowflakes, oversensitive people or something. And um, it finally clicked for me. I mean, I've known that wasn't the case for a long time, and it finally clicked as to why. And one of the things, it kind of ties into another one of the patterns that I think so many of us have as we move into recovery. And that is the pattern of trying to conform to an idea of who you're supposed to be instead of who you actually are. And this is... Um, one, the word that I use, and I, this is going to be my definition for the purpose of this video, is this um, image we're given a lot of times as children by our culture, uh, and just as we grow up, and, and just in being part of the human world, right? By culture, by family, by religion, um, even by our friends, whatever, you know, whoever has influence over how you view yourself, we end up with this self-image of this idea, this concept of who we're supposed to be, right? Where our self-image is informed by all of these different factors and all these other things, and it may or may not actually match up with who you are. And the reason this is, this is significant is that who you, when you're actually just doing what comes naturally to you, you tap into your parasympathetic nervous system, you tap into um, the fact that that's wired into your being. You know, you are you, you have preferences and skills that and again, I, I, for the purposes of this video, and in my personal opinion, I don't think it really matters, um, you know, what, where that comes from, whether it's genetics or wh whatever it is. We all have our own unique set of skills and way of being that is like a fingerprint. It's entirely unique, you know, who we are when we're just not trying and <laughs> just being who we are. And that allows both your, it allows your, your parasympathetic or your rest and digest state to be your automatic one. And it also allows when you're working really hard at something you're passionate about, when you go into a sympathetic or a stress state, it's in the context of a positive emotion. And so it ends up what that looks like is passion instead of stress. And that is sustainable in the long run. So when we build a life that's true to who we actually are instead of who we, who we were told we were or who we thought we were because of a number of experiences growing up um, through our lives up to a certain point, it is sustainable. We're building something that we're building a legacy for the world and something that we'll be able to enjoy and, you know, leave something behind that's meaningful when we leave. And a lot of times I know for, for myself in recovery and those of us in recovery, I, I tried to use my tools to force myself to be the idea that was in my head of who I was supposed to be. And it was, um, I, the most difficult and courageous thing I did was to let go of that and start to actually listen for who I am and realize that, that's valid. I, and I don't, you know, there's, again, in a part of the world, in a perspective, there's this idea that you should just be able to be whoever people tell you you're supposed to be. And um, that's definitely not something I have the physiological capacity to do. And I don't think, I think a lot of us can't, can't do that because of whatever, if we have trauma and so forth, the idea you're given in, in part of it is realizing that that is literally an illusion. It's an image. It's an, it's a self image that is created by other people that has nothing to do with you. So in this, practically speaking, in your day-to-day -day, as you're, you know, if you're in recovery or you're living your life and you're asking yourself, you know, should I post this? Should I um, eat this? Should I, you know, should I go for a run or do yoga? Should I take a nap or should I make dinner? Should I do one thing or the other? Um, how do, you know, how is it, how is it I want to show up in my relationships with the people that I love? All of that, asking yourself more, you know, what your values are, getting tapped into like your own heart. And that's, this is why I only believe in following my heart. Cause when you follow your heart, it's sustainable and it's authentic. And you are gonna, you are going to um, do whatever it takes. If you're showing up in a relationship or in your life, in your job, in your recovery, because it's what you care about and you care about yourself and you're allowing yourself to be yourself, it's going to be authentic, it's going to be effective, it's going to be sustainable. The, the biggest part of this though is letting go of the illusion that we have or that our self-worth and our acceptability has any, by others has something to do with this image we were given by, again, whatever, whatever it may be for you, um, your family, your culture, religion, etc. 
and there's always the risk when we choose to be ourselves that we will lose people the illusion though is that that has something to do with our worth and the huge part of um a place where people get stuck and i i got stuck in this place so many more times than i can count was thinking that i had to make myself fit this image in my mind otherwise the world my limbic system made it feel like the world was going to end and then i started to actually ask but like what's the reality here like okay let me get rid of this this is an idea in my head like this is a dead end road it's not working trying to use my tools and my knowledge and my efforts to support this idea other people gave me of what acceptable is isn't working it's making it's making me physiologically stuck in a stress response that keeps me from doing anything so coming back to the present moment and saying what can i do what can i do and a lot of times what i wanted to do and what my my you know super ego was telling me i was supposed to do was go care about go care for your kids go clean your kitchen go clean your bathroom go make dinner and that wasn't available what was available was dancing and taking a walk and sitting in a tree and just enjoying the sunlight and i finally just had to say f it i can't try to be someone I'm not anymore and this is what I need right now so I started going down that path and the more I followed my heart and created a really healthy sense of self and and realized that I'm allowed to show up in my family and in my life as who I am and not as the idea of me that paraded around as me for the past 30 years and it, it works how about that it works and I stopped being stuck and I've started being able to be more integrally part of my life and my family life and all these different things but that's um yeah, the the two themes overall being you can't conform yourself to a concept because it's not real, it's not who you are, and that's going to activate stress chemistry because it's not, it's literally not there. You're trying to make yourself into something that's an uh, illusion. Um, operating from your heart space is physiologically sustainable. It leads to health and well-being. When you live from your heart and you live from your passions and your true values, you have natural energy all day. You're naturally motivated you're fully engaged in what you're doing the people that you're with feel loved and cared about because it's coming from your heart and soul and they can feel that um and you'll sleep well you'll digest well i mean everything in your life but also yeah within you and in your body and your life will work and so this is where self-acceptance is a very practical thing because when you accept yourself your body is allowed to relax and thrive and be healthy and the life you build is one that will be lasting and enjoyable for you and everyone you're around. So, um, yeah, just, this is a huge, huge part of recovery and just of living, living life, allowing yourself to be who you are and to realize that you can't give the world um, something you're not. And when we stop trying to do that, we can give the world what it is we actually have to give. And it's such, such a beautiful gift and we need you. We need you and your unique expression, whatever that is. I guarantee you the reason this world is a beautiful place is because we're all so different. I know that sounds cliche, but I study this every day in every way. And there, I have yet to, to come across a person I don't enjoy who, who in their being their authentic self. It's just a beautiful thing. So I encourage you to, um, when you're using your tools and, and doing your process and whatever that looks like for you, whether you're in recovery or not, think more about, you know, listen more for who you are and what does work in that moment go towards what works in that moment and trust that you'll be able to achieve all you want when you cooperate with your limbic system your nervous system and your authentic self as they're actually as they actually are instead of as any ideas in your head of what they're supposed to be it's effective so and that makes it fulfilling and um encouraging so we don't get frustrated and stuck so that's my offering for you today of how self-acceptance is practical and how it affects your biology. Much love to you, my friends. Mwah.